friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Mrs. Venus and I'm a kinder teacher in Texas. Today I'm going to be walking you through a PowerPoint tutorial teaching you how to make your own bulletin letters. So I'll be walking you through these two examples. The first one will be your typical cutout letters and the second example will be these pen and style letters. These are super easy to make, totally customizable and can jazz up any classroom. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing as always when we are creating a resource on PowerPoint that we want to print, we need to resize the page. So let's head over to design, slide size, custom slide size, and my page is going to be landscape. So my width will be 11 and the height eight and a half. Okay, maximize, delete the text boxes, back to home, going up here where the shapes are and I will click on the line. I'm going to drag it down the middle of the page. I'm going to be printing these in cardstock and I want two letters per page. So this line will remind me where half of the page is. Back to home. Now we're going to click on the text box. My banner is going to say wonderful work. So my first letter is W and I'm going to have uppercase letters because for me it is just way easier to cut. I'm going to highlight my letter and pick a font. I'm going to use KG Shake It Off Chunky. I really like how these uppercase letters look. Make my text bigger. If you want to change the color of the letter, here's what you do. Highlight the letter, go to Shape Format, and we are going to click on this letter style up here. And I want my text outline to be black. And you can also change how thick you want the black line to be. I like to show the black when I cut my letters. So I like this thickness and go back to text fill. That's where you can change the color. If you want to pick another, you can go to more colors. Now we can copy and paste. My next letter in wonderful is O. And this is where it gets even easier. We are just going to duplicate this page and keep spelling out our title. Now that my title is spelled out, let me show you a couple of tricks. If you're trying to come up with a color palette theme for your classroom, let me show you a super cool website. It is called coolers.co and this is a free website where you can explore different color palettes. So let me show you an example of how I would use this. We're going to hit explore and I really like pastel colors, so I'm going to type that in. And I'm going to pick a palette that I like. There's a ton that are already generated, but you can definitely make your own custom palette with however many colors you want. All right, I found one that I like for this example. And I have a Windows laptop, so I have a snipping tool that I keep on my taskbar. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to click on new and kind of highlight over the palette that I like. I'm going to save it as a picture. And now I'm back in PowerPoint, so I'm going to drag that picture in. So if I want to use this palette, I'm going to highlight my letter again, shape format, text fill, and you're going to click on the eyedropper. And this is my first color, so I will click that. So now I'll just keep going and follow that pattern. Now that I've used all five of the colors, I don't need to keep copying and pasting the text box. Your recent colors will show up here. So if you want to print your letters out in cute colors, you can definitely refer to that website to get palette idea colors. And before I move on to my next example, let me quickly show you where I download fonts from. You may or may not have heard of thefont.com. There are thousands of free fonts here, but I personally prefer to download them from a teacher paid teacher store. And a very popular one is Kimberly Gesswing font. I'm signed into my teachers pay teachers account and I'm going to download, open the folder, open. Sometimes there will be different versions of that font. So for this one, there are two different font files. Let's go to the first one. So you're going to click on the true type font file and click install. And once it turns light gray, you know that it's installed. I'll go ahead and install the other one too. 
And now I'm back in PowerPoint, but as you can see, the font is not showing up because you want to make sure that PowerPoint is closed. So I'm going to close this out. So now that I've opened up my PowerPoint again, you can see the fonts here. And I chose to have no fill in my letters because I knew that I was going to print them out in pink cardstock paper. So if you are printing on colored paper, you can click on the no fill option. So I will only need seven cardstock sheet, which is better than 14 if I would have printed these letters out individually per page. So this saves me paper. So once I print these letters, I like to cut them before I laminate them and one reason is because it saves me laminating sheets so I fit all 13 of these letters and the exclamation mark in just three laminating sheets. So once I'm done printing my letters and I start cutting, I have some letters like the letter O that has a space that needs to be cut on the inside so a couple of hacks. I used to just fold it and kind of slit it and cut around it like that. So you're welcome to do that. If you have an X-Acto knife, you can also use an X-Acto knife to cut it. Or what is probably the easiest now is if you just go ahead and cut around it like this. And once we laminate it, you won't even be able to tell that we cut there. And when you're getting ready to put up your letters on a bulletin board or on a wall, a really neat trick is to line up your letters on the edge of a table. So that way you can make sure that the letters are spaced out and that they're straight. And then you can put painter's tape across your letters so that they will stay together and lined up. And that makes transporting your letters and trying to get them in a good spot way easier. So those are my little tips and tricks for cutout letters. Let's get into our second example. So I created these pen and style letters because I will be using them in my classroom. This is not the best picture, but we are required to have an instructional wall where we display our objectives for the week. So I just wanted to have a cute instructional board and make it clear where my objectives are. So I'll be reprinting them. And instead of the pastel colors, I decided to do black. And one reason that I love pennant letters is because it's just way easier to cut. So when I've been making new bulletin titles, I have been creating pennant banner style letters like in this one. For this example, let's create a welcome banner together. I will let you know at the end where these came from because I did not make these. So this page is also in a landscape setup and I'm going to go to the shapes again. We're going down to block arrows and we'll click on this pentagon shape. You can make these pennants as big as you want. So I'll just make this one large since it will be a welcome banner. We're going to turn it now. I don't want any fill on this shape. Shape outline black. Play with the thickness. The next shape we'll insert is a triangle. I'm gonna turn it around as well. We don't want any shape outline for this. And for this example, I'll use the pastel palette color again. So click on the shape, shape fill, eyedropper. And then we're going to right click and send the shape back. That way you can still see the black thick lines. Next, I'm going to highlight both shapes. So make sure that you see all of these little dots and then we're going to right click and we're going to group them together. So what that essentially does is combine both of the shapes. So now it's just one and you can drag it around. Now I'm going to copy and paste. You can still click on the triangle, shape fill, eyedropper. Now I'll duplicate the slide. Now I'm going to use a cute cursive font for this welcome banner. So now my banner is done. You could easily make this welcome banner yourself and display it in your classroom door as you're welcoming and meeting your students for the first time. And going back to my example, I'll be honest and I don't know how to create these, not on PowerPoint at least. I would use Canva if you want to start adding cute images like this with a background but the inspiration for this pennant title comes from a decor pack that I bought. It's by Ashley McKenzie so you can see her pennant style letters here and when you purchase that she includes 
these slides so I just drag the slide but that really wraps up this tutorial I really hope that this was helpful and that you start creating your own unique classroom decor and let me know in the comments what kind of decor you plan on creating thank you so much for watching please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful and I'll see you in the next one